Hello, everyone. Today we're in Bournemouth to visit Sir Roy Walensky. Sir Roland Roy Walensky was born on 20th of January 1907 and was a northern Rhodesian politician and the second and last Prime Minister of the Federation of Rhodesia and Nyasaland. Born in Salisbury, southern Rhodesia, now Harare, Zimbabwe, to an Afrikaner mother and a Lithuanian Jewish father, he moved to northern Rhodesia, became involved with the trade unions, and entered the Colonial Legislative Council in 1938. Becoming Prime Minister of the Federation in 1956, Walensky opposed British moves towards black majority rule, and he used force to suppress politically motivated violence in the territories. After the advent of black majority rule in two of the Federation's three territories, Northern Rhodesia and Nyasaland, now Zambia and Malawi, respectively, the Federation collapsed in 1963. Walensky retired to Salisbury, where he re-entered politics and attempted to stop Rhodesia, formerly Southern Rhodesia, from unilaterally declaring itself independent. With the end of white minority rule in 1979 and the recognised independence of Rhodesia as the Republic of Zimbabwe under Robert Mugabe in 1980, Walensky emigrated to the United Kingdom, where he died in England in 1991. A fervent admirer of Britain and its empire, Walensky described himself as half Jewish, half Afrikaner, and 100% British. After leaving school at the age of 14, Walensky found employment with Rhodesia Railways as a fireman, while putting his physical strength to work as a boxer. He rose through the ranks of Rhodesia Railways to become a locomotive engine driver and became involved in the trade union movement, joining the Rhodesian Railway Workers' Union. While working on the railways, he became the professional heavyweight boxing champion of Southern Rhodesia at 19 years old and held the position until he was 21. Walensky was elected to the Northern Rhodesian Legislative Council in the 1938 general elections. The governor of Northern Rhodesia prevented Walensky from enlisting in the armed forces during World War II and appointed him Director of Manpower. In 1941, he formed his own party, the Northern Rhodesian Labour Party, with the aim of amalgamating the colony with Southern Rhodesia under a new constitution. The party won all five seats it contested in the 1941 elections, after the leader of the unofficial members in the Legislative Council, Stuart Gore Brown, resigned in 1945 and stated that black Africans had lost confidence in the whites due to the wish for amalgamation, Walensky was elected leader. Although a member of the Legislative Council, this was not a full-time job and he continued working as a train driver for Rhodesia Railways and also as a trade union leader. The Southern Rhodesian government, under the leadership of Garfield Todd, began removing restrictions imposed on native Africans. The civil service opened more positions to blacks. The title for male Africans was changed from AM, African male, to Mr. And diners and restaurants were allowed to be multiracial. Walensky, as transport minister, allowed for railway dining cars to be multiracial. However, when it came to liberalizing alcohol restrictions on blacks, Walensky argued against doing so, stating that such an action would cause the UFP to lose the next election. After repeated failed attempts to secure Dominion status for the Federation, the Prime Minister Godfrey Huggins opted not to stand again for his party's leadership at their September 1956 conference. Huggins resigned in October, and Walensky, the second most senior figure in the federal arena, was chosen to replace him. Walensky took office on 1st November. On taking office, Walensky was forced to take sides in the Suez Crisis. The government of the United Kingdom received heavy international criticism for its actions, but Walensky's government, with those of Australia and New Zealand, nonetheless stood behind Britain. It was Walensky's first experience in international politics. In the aftermath of the Suez debacle, British colonial policy changed significantly, which would have adverse effects for the Federation. It marked the decline of a gradual approach to decolonization and a rapid speeding up of the process. Politically, only three years after its founding, the Federation began to decline. The governor of Northern Rhodesia, Sir Arthur Benson, wrote a secret letter to his superiors in Britain, highly critical of Walensky and the Federation. This letter remained undiscovered until 1958, when Huggins revealed it to Walensky. And here is the grave of Sir Roy Walensky, who passed away back in 1991.